Nigeria's Minister of Information blames the country's inability to adequately fight insecurity on what powers. And the House of Representatives expresses displeasure over comments by the British House of Commons on the hashtag NSAS protest and former head of state General Yakubu Gawan. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladeide. Welcome. This is Plus Politics. The Minister of Information in Nigeria, that's the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, has expressed that some world powers are stopping Nigeria from getting the much needed armament needed to fight insecurity in the country. He added that the action of the world powers was frustrating resolve to end the insurgency. And still on the forest scene, we also have some issues that has to do with Borono State, where the governor, Baba Ghana Zulum, has given six recommendations to President Muhammadu Buhari. And to discuss this, we have um, Air Vice Marshal Femi Badibo, a security consultant, to help us make sense of the intricacies around this issue. Good evening, AVM. Good evening, and thank you for having me on. I'm so excited to have you tonight. Um, while I'm excited, I'm also a bit worried that we have to discuss these issues again. And over and over again, I will recall some of the recommendations you've made. But let's look at it, whether we have some listening government or probably is not getting to the right quarter. So what do you make out of this statement made by the Minister of Information concerning what he described as more of a sabotage. How visible is this? Well, um, you see, the process of procuring arms, ammunition, and particularly weapons of the type of aircraft um, is cumbersome and usually um, has governments involved. So no matter uh, how desirous a contractor is to supply you, uh, if the government of the country does not approve certain arms and ammunition, then there'll be an embargo, particularly in the U.S., it usually happens at the Senate. Um, then, of course, you, you have the time limit of delivering these things. We know that there's always supposed to be, yeah, time limit for manufacturing to delivery. But when they are interested, honestly, they can take out of their own reserve stock and supply you immediately while yours is being prepared. So, yes, um, every time there is a kind of disagreement or misunderstanding between the Nigerian government and, say, the government of the United States or the EU, any of the European countries, um, this is one of the areas where they go in which they uh, kind of frustrate our effort to get what we need to get the job done. Okay, so let, let's also look at um, what could actually cause this sabotage. We felt more, uh, we felt for the laymen now, we felt it's time for them to make some money. It's time for them to see how some of these weaponry are disposed to willing buyers. So what could actually be the cry of the government? Is it that these things are not being made available or they are seeking assistance from this word pass? Um, well, if you want to buy from the black market, just like uh, <laughs> Naira to dollar rates, it, it is really, really exorbitant. And that goes down on what you can do. And if you say you have a friendly agreement with the government, then these are some of the, you know, when you have bilateral agreements like military and other cooperation agreements, Agreements. These are part of the areas. In fact, in some cases, um, they 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 give these things. They could give these things to you as part of their contribution to seeing to uh, the the success of the operations. They did a lot of that 
in Liberia when we're having the Liberian economic war crisis, even when they had problems with Nigeria, they were providing resources directly to ECOMO, that is, the, the, or to the armed forces of Ghana. But um, when you have issues, I, 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 I think we also need to understand that um, around the year 2000, a document was leaked in which the security agencies of the United States were they had a proposition that Nigeria would break up before 2015. Well, somehow Nigeria has continued to remain, and we've seen all kinds of problems from the Niger Delta uh, to the Northeast and now in the Northwest. And um, if you look at particularly in the, in the area of the North, you will see that the, you have substantial, uh, the terrain is such that the kind of weapons that Boko Haram is using, uh, apart from the guns, even the motorized, uh, uh, the motorbikes and so on, mountain bikes, they have to be supplied by some foreign agency using aircrafts or using the land borders of some friendly countries. So there's a lot that is going on uh, in the Northeast that um, beats our imagination, really, and which is why it is... Um, you know, the more you decimate them, the more they seem to get arms and ammunition, not to talk of funds, because um, they have to foil the vehicles or the bikes, they have to uh, feed the troops, not to talk of the drugs and all in which they, which they make available to them, which make them do all these crazy things that they're doing. So some agencies are definitely uh, interested in seeing that we do not... Uh, contain this crisis as it is. I, I, I was going to even, you just took the words out of my mouth. It beats our imagination as laymen. But I want to believe that uh, there is more to this than if you would oblige us to explain. Uh, sometimes when we see some of this weaponry being used by the insurgents, we're looking at it that what does it take to track the source? What does it take to track the funding? What does it take to even track the, the chains, the movement of these weapons. And that's why you see many of us a bit worried. The, the, the move the federal government, the agency did when they were going to track uh, you know, the sponsors or the alleged sponsors of NSAR. So what does it take to deploy this intelligence to track the insurgents down? I'm glad you are bringing this in. You can see how easily they were able to come up with tracking of the military vehicles that did one thing or the other, and so on. But now we talk about the Nazis. They have never been able to track, or at least to help us track, the movements of Boko Haram. Um, Sambisa Forest, from of satellite imagery, you can get every single location in that forest. We have not been able to get these things, and so on. So it's just a question of certain foreign powers being interested in destabilizing the government of Nigeria. Um, so sometimes when you hear the Minister of uh, Information speak, you can, you can feel the frustration. And the frustration comes from the available intelligence or the information being made available to them as to how, first of all, what we were supposed to get on Monday suddenly is not available on Thursday and how certain people who are supposed to have been degraded are suddenly able to get to certain parts of the country and do some of the things that they're doing. Mind you, Boko Haram is not fighting a war. They haven't been fighting a war for a long time. They have been doing what you call shock and awe, which is looking for soft targets, getting there, creating mayhem, and disappearing back into wherever they're coming from. Uh, what that does is to frighten the, the villagers and to some extent, even the soldiers, the troops who are fighting there. So, um, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done. The, this, the, the, the Nigerian army, honestly, from records available, have done well. The Air Force have done a lot of uh, strikes from the air. And there's just need for uh, better intelligence to avoid unnecessary wastage of manpower. 
Wow. I, 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 while it appears that a lot of Nigerians may not agree with you, especially talking from the recent uh, experience in Borono where we had, as we speak, I think there is an independent figure showing close to 70. At least the 110 has been disputed and confirmed that it was exaggerated. But even if it is one life, we are looking at have we become helpless? Even when the presidency explained to us that the place is volatile and that necessitated such huge number of deaths being recorded in one felt swoop. So I'm looking at how do we uh, come out of this helpless situation if you don't agree with me now? Or if you agree with that word? Well, <laughs> we need to um, get back to working as a country. At, as, as of now, Nigeria, I don't think Nigeria has been as divided as we are now, where, um, you know, the youths, the opposition party, and certain other, you know, uh, individuals who are not happy with what is going on are calling on foreign governments to, to you know, uh, when you are calling on them to place embargoes on Nigeria to do all sorts of things, you are not exactly helping the situation where, where, where all these people are playing into the uh, hands of those mm. who really don't want us to make progress. So you can see that when there is a debate at the House of Commons or anywhere in the U.S. and so on, on one side, they have been discussing how to release or to let these military weapons go to Nigeria, like the Tucano aircrafts that have been online for God knows how long. But on the other hand, you are getting these discussions, and most of these people, this is where they get their feedback from. And so they go back to the defense committee and say, how can we give weapons to these same people who are supposed to be using these weapons on their own people? Okay. So I think we need to really understand the signals that we're setting, sending out as a people, as a nation, and also, um, you, know, see, you know, reduce some of those things. Okay. Um, well, this will bring us more into the conspiracy theory. Um, I'm afraid we have to go into it because I think you sound very, very convinced that this is more of a sabotage. And I'm asking... What do they really stand to gain? Let's go a bit into international politics now. If they see us go into crisis, I will remind you of what is going on in Utopia as we speak, where you have the international community seemingly quiet for a long time. And when the issue was becoming quite unbearable, we see them trying to come in. And the Utopian government had to tell them, please stay clear. We are almost conquering the rebels, so to say. So maybe you should put us, fill us in on how does this thing work? What do they stand to gain? To see refugees in large number? Or is there more to United Nations what it stands for? Well, I, I think um, our historians need to begin to tell us some of the truth as to how we got to where we are now. Um, and one of those who believe that it is not in the best interest of the white man for an African nation to succeed. Hmm. And if you look at what's happening, even in America now, you can see the number of Nigerians who are excelling in various fields. That shows you the quality of the Nigerian. If you take the average Nigerian and you compare him with somebody from other parts of Africa, I don't want to name them here, you can see a, a higher level of sophistication. And that's why uh, a light from Ali Mazrui, the late Ali Mazrui, and so on, everybody keeps saying that they are waiting for Nigeria to get our act together. Once we get our act together, Africa will be truly free. Now, those who don't want Africa to be free, they understand this, and they will do anything to undermine Nigeria. Now coming out as a future global power and so on. So what you find is that at every attempt, efforts are being made to destabilize whatever progress we seem to be making. You can imagine that, uh, you know, at this stage, it was like we had totally 
uh, conquered Boko Haram and everything was falling into place until suddenly we started to see all these acts of insurgency going on. And before you could say, Jack, the whole thing had spread to the Northwest. We had no problem in the Northwest for quite a long time. But, you know, we look at Zamfara, it was traced to the gold that was being illegally mined. All over Africa, the white man, particularly the French, have continued illegal tapping of our resources. And once there is confusion, I remember when Liberia was hot, there were still foreigners, Europeans, Lebanese and all, mining gold, mining timber and so on. So all they needed was to get uh, in agreement with whoever the warlord was for that set particular area and then access to the sea and they're exporting. Okay, so the, the Niger, Africa and Nigeria to some extent is where the resources are mm -hmm. and they need these resources and they need them at their own terms. So as long as we continue to try to make waves and try to get ourselves together, um, they will continue to destabilize us to where they're going. And I hope that, uh, like I said, historians will begin to tell the true story of how we got to where we are. And so that our youths, um, you can see there's been a, a very major gap in history. Um, you know, when somebody thinks that it is the British Parliament or some, you, you, uh, some politicians from the US, who can come and sort out a problem in Nigeria, then they don't understand the meaning of independence. Hmm. Okay? We need to sort this thing out. It's something that we can sort out out here. Uh, I'll, I'll just like to leave it there. Okay, Mr. Femi <laughs> Gadebo, I'm almost tempted to invite you for a second discussion because it's like you just preempted our, our second topic because we're looking at uh, what the House of Reps um, resolved today to say that... Uh, they kicked against what the House of Commons did say about Yakubu Gowan and that of the resolution on NSAS. But probably if you oblige us, we'll bring you into that discussion. But still on this issue that we are looking at, uh, let me agree with you for the purpose of this discussion that uh, the foreign powers need their suspects in this issue. But you highlighted some of the problems we have. We are divided in terms of demography. The youths have, a good number of them have lost faith in the people in power. Now we are divided in terms of religion, where people believe the government has some kind of religious agenda. We are divided politically, where people would say, during our time, is this number of lives that were killed and not this number of lives. And that was quite pedestrian. So how do we come together to look at live as lives and not just some kind of numbers being counted? Well, you find that uh, even at the state and local government level, we seem to have very little regard for the cost of a human life. Uh, you know, arm robbers, or somebody's called an, uh, an arm robber and you throw, you burn him down on the spot. Uh, maybe there's a hit and run and the body lies on the street for, uh, for days and so on. It's like, where are the agencies that are supposed to take uh, responsibility for this thing? So the police are not functioning properly. The health and sanitary agencies are not functioning. Our hospitals are virtually down. Um, so this is really where the issues are. We must get back to the basics. We must... Uh, get to a stage where we're even having our sanitary inspectors to go around to check the areas and so on. I think, you know, for somebody to be sending us, uh, you know, mos treated mosquito nets at this stage hmm. in our, of our independence uh, is really wrong. Because, you know, if the right things are done, if the areas are sanitized, if the people are aware of the need to keep the areas clean, we wouldn't have such bad cases of malaria at this time. So it's that aspect of taking care of the basic needs of the Nigerian and then doing whatever uh, is needed to show that lives. You know, the Americans talked about Black Lives Matter. We have a problem in Nigeria where it's as if Nigerian lives don't matter. matter. And so we need to show from government at local, state and federal levels that indeed these lives matter so that people begin to value and take care of each other. We, we, there was a joke a few days ago that, you know, somebody is burning um, and 
all Nigerians do is bring out their cameras and they are taking pictures and nobody's willing to go out and help the gentleman wow. that is burning in his car or something like that. So we need to really uh, begin to address uh, the shortcomings in our society. Um, you'd find, um, like in Lagos, for instance, uh, at the same Jubilee Bridge, I think it, it is, every couple of days, there's, there's the truck burns down and many cars are not going, and nothing is being done. It, I mean, if people, if Nigerian government and government officials really care about the lives of Nigerians, immediately something happens, you will see major steps being taken. Okay. The, starting from next day. Exactly. To make sure that it doesn't happen again. And when it does happen, you have ambulances, you have all kinds of fire services, and all that are available to take care of these things. Okay. If you're on body ball, let's, let's look at, um, still on what uh, Mr. Lai Mohammed uh, said. He, he, he explained that the operations of the insurgents are consistent in different parts of the world that they are actually meant to instigate fear, make people scared of them, get people, you know, cut their throats in a very gruesome manner. And we also have the governor of Borono State trying to look for solution by saying, let's get the youth, let's recruit them, let's bring them into the civilian JTF. So as the way forward, how do we treat this you know, these wicked souls who are, you know, cutting lives in their primes? Well, um, as the governor said, we need to have um, local, very local sources of uh, engagement. Um, there's no way that you can have the army deployed in every corner of every local government. Uh, when you do that, they'll be too thin on ground to enforce any form of uh, reasonable engagement. But within every rural area, local government, they, the people know themselves. Um, they even have their own form of vigilantes who just need a little more training and firepower. And that's also part of the problem. If we don't have enough firepower for the army and the other security agencies, how are we going to have enough power for our for this, uh, you know, vigilantes that we're talking about. Because if they're going to face Boko Haram, they must be adequately equipped. Uh, otherwise, they will just be sitting dogs for the Boko Haram when they come. Okay, so uh, looking at these young people, looking at uh, their efforts on the path, because the better we involve them, the better we can avoid some kind of anarchy which we may not be able to handle. So how do we do this? Because the governor seems to be saying that we haven't done enough, that his people are being killed almost every day. Yeah, we haven't done enough, but uh, this is where we need to ask the governors what they're doing with their security votes. Uh, as a substantial amount of money that they use at their pleasure, uh, we are aware that some of the governors in the north, uh, particularly in the northwest, have resorted to, um, you know, like settling the terrorists with the hope of having an understanding that they will stop what they're doing. But what has been the result? They've actually gone, they've gone wilder than they were before. Um, and I think this just agrees with the Western ideology that you do not negotiate with a terrorist, you do not negotiate with a hostage taker, and so on. You, you, you stand your ground and you figure out how you can, uh, you, you can stop them from... Because when you pay hostage, they use the money to build themselves up and become a bigger source of, of, of frustration to you and so on. They, they'll never stop what they're doing. It's just like a blackmailer. Once somebody blackmails you and you pay, uh, one, and they're going to come back. And they'll keep coming back until you wise up to the fact that, okay, look, go and tell everybody my secret. I'm, not, I'm no longer uh, afraid of people hearing what, I'm, what, what I've done or something in the past. So the, the young men are there. We're talking about engaging people. Well, let's see if he can even start it in the northeast. Uh, he's given suggestions. What exactly does he want? 
I can assure you that the army um, in less than six weeks can give this young man adequate training to be able to do certain things. Uh, so, you know, let, let, let him put down the money and let, uh, I, let the local governments identify the people and then let's see how uh, the net, we'll move on from there. If he now needs more money from the federal government, and then he can, he, then he can say that. And thank you so much, uh, Air Vice Marshal Femi Badibo. And uh, like I hinted you, we wouldn't mind to still have you for a second uh, topic where we'll be looking at uh, what the House of Reps uh, have just uh, said concerning the House of Common deliberation on our internal affairs. So for now, thank you for your insight. We'll take a short break. And when we return, the House of Representatives expresses displeasure over the comments of the British House of Commons as regards the ANSA's protest and former head of state, General Yakubu Gowan. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> 